Now we will demonstrate some of the features available in the Load Leveler web user interface. We connect to the web user interface using a web browser pointing the URL to the hostname running the server followed by slash IVM slash console. Here is the welcome page for the web user interface. You can log in using any user ID that is configured on the machine running the web server. On the left side, you see the navigation for Load Leveler. Clicking on the navigation will expand out some links. Let's first take a look at the Work with Jobs view. This view is very similar to our load leveler LLQ command. We show basic information of the job, such as the name, owner, the state of the job, the job submission time, and the class that the job belongs to. We also provide a quick submit link on the page, where the user can submit a job command file to the cluster. Here you see that job 834 has been submitted. Along the top of the screen, there is a section containing job filters. The first option, Show My Jobs Only, will filter out the job queue and only show the jobs that are owned by the user logged into the web UI. The remaining options will filter out the job queue based on the job states. For example, if we only wanted to see the jobs in idle queue, we would unselect every other job state except for idle and click apply filter. Here we see that the only jobs displayed in the queue are jobs in idle state. So before going on we'll also show the jobs in running state. <coughs> Clicking on the graphical overview we see a graphical representation of the job queue. We can see details for the job when we hover over the boxes. We are also able to zoom in and out. As we zoom in, we see more information of the job, specifically the job name. The colors of the boxes represent the different state that the job is in. The blue boxes represent the jobs in running state and the white boxes represent jobs that are in idle state. Held jobs will, be, will appear with a yellow color. In addition to the filters at the top, in the graphical view we can also show jobs by class, by user, and by idle job. In these view you may need to scroll horizontally to see all the jobs that are displayed. This first column shows the jobs that are in the class large. The second column shows jobs that are in the class no class. In the idle jobs view, we have a drag and drop feature to favor idle jobs. Dragging the drop dragging an idle job up to the top gray section will favor the job, and dragging a favored job down to the bottom gray section will remove the favor on the job. So here we see that the job was favored and the command has been sent to the central manager. All of the load leveler actions that can be performed on the jobs are available through the right click context menu. So we can select a job, right click, and we see that we can cancel a job, modify a job, set user priority, and so on. Now looking at the work with machines view. This view is similar to our load leveler LL status command. We show the machine name and the health of the machine and whether the start D or get D daemons are running. Similar to the job view, we have a few filters that can be applied such as showing machines in a particular st status. Green checkboxes represent machines in good working state. 
The yellow triangle with an exclamation point represents machines that are in a warning state. Something is not quite right. A red X shows machines that have problems and require some action. Clicking on the graphical view, we see a graphical representation of the cluster. We see there are five machines in the cluster, and all of them are in good health state. We can zoom in and out depending on how many machines we want to see in the view. As we zoom in, we see more information displayed, such as central manager and demons that are running. Also, by hovering over the machine, we can get the details of the machine. We can select machines with the left click of the mouse. Actions on, for the machines are also available in the right click context menu. For instance, we can stop the machine that we have selected. Here we see that the stop command has been sent to the host. When actions are being performed on machines or jobs, the machine or job will be grayed out. During this time, we cannot, we cannot select and run additional actions on the machines. So let's give this a couple more seconds. For the view to update. Now we see that the machine is down and it's colored red. This is very useful when debugging the cluster to quickly see if machines are in good health or not. Now let's take a look at the reservations page. Here we see two reservations that have been set up for the cluster. By clicking on the reservation, we can see the details of the reservation below. While the reservation is not active, you can make changes to the reservation from the details page. Simply find the field you want to change and click edit. Type in the change and click submit changes to process the change. Let's change this to 300, seconds, 300 minutes. We see that the request to change the reservation has been sent to load leveler. We have three different views for reservations. The table view we currently see. Next is a timeline view. In this view, the line on the left represents the current time. As the reservations get closer to becoming active, they will move from right to left across the screen. We can change the scope to see more days within this view. So as we scroll over, we see our reservation that is approaching. The third view is a calendar view. Here we see a reservation that we have set up for August 25th. We go to the next month, we see the reservation on September 1st. Clicking the reservations in any of the views will show the details of the reservations below. Here we see we have changed the duration to 300 minutes. The next thing we will look at is the job command file builder. The load leveler job command file is fairly complex and we created a builder to help create job command files. Wherever possible we help the user by providing a set of options in a form and the user can simply select the options to create the job command file instead of typing it in from the command line. We provide options to save, restore from file, preview, clear, as well as submit. Any information that we can automatically determine will be filled out in the forms. Another feature we provide in the web UI is a way to display accounting data. The first time we enter the page, we allow the administrator to set up some parameters before we run the data. So let's take a look at user and class.
Here we see tables containing the accounting information on by user and the accounting information by class. The first chart we see that there have been 234 jobs submitted. 170 of those jobs belong to the user loadout demo. We also show graphical representation of this data. From these graphs, it is easy to see that the small class is taking up about 50% of the jobs that have been through the cluster. So this was a brief overview of some of the features available in the web user interface.